Hello everybody and welcome to another photography talk and this time I want to talk about some consideration I had after I watched the next bit uh, with the images by Jax Henry Lartig. Before we begin, as usual, if you want to support the channel, please put a like, subscribe, share with your friends, uh, put everywhere on the social media and if you want to do something more, check out my books, uh, Lasting Photographs novel beautiful reviews photography dev manual everything you need to know about photography and inject fine art pretty last saturday was a beautiful spring day and i decided to take a little trip uh, in the Langa region and uh, i went first of all in alba that is the main city around there is 50 minutes from my home here and uh, I went there because uh, at the Ferrero Foundation, yes, Ferrero is the same that produced Nutella, they have a beautiful foundation, and uh, there was an exhibit of photographs by Jacques Henri Lartig. It was a beautiful show, and uh, it was very interesting, and made me think a lot about photography, where we are, where we are going, and so on. If you don't know Lartig, mm, go online and uh, check it out. It's beautiful, beautiful photographer. Or just get a book like this. And to show you a photograph that probably you know because it was on every photography manual is this one of the distorted car. This was used on every photographer manual to uh, give an example of what we call now a rolling shutter at the time was uh, just the distortion caused by the vertical or horizontal um, curtain of the of the shutter so that's one of the most uh, probably known image by every photographer that read a book about photography but uh, uh, is known for other beautiful pictures and by the way online you can go to lartig.org and there's a, the website is the foundation uh, dedicated to Henri Lartig and there are a lot of pictures there I don't show the images here because I don't know uh, exactly if it's possible for copyright reason and so on so just go online and check it out one thing that is important is uh, to go to exhibits because it is absolutely important to see the images in their reality, to see the prints, to see the original prints, how they were made and so on. Uh, we tend to look uh, at uh, a lot of photo photographs right now online and that's probably the worst way to do it because we see a digital conversion of an, an analog world and uh, that changes uh, the things a lot. But uh, that exhibit was uh, fantastic. And by the way, it was very curious because Lartig was born in 1894 and he died in uh, 1986. And so he had a very long life uh, in a period with uh, a lot of things going on because we are talking about uh, crossing World War I, World War II, and so on. So it's uh, a very interesting. But the things that really impressed me was uh, one the feeling that I had from the photographs of uh, the joy of life. It is something that I don't see in uh, uh, modern images. Uh, I give you an example, for example here, it's very common, right now every moment there is an exhibit uh, with uh, Steve McCurry images. And, uh, okay, they are the opposite. I was looking at these images and uh, they are so full of joy and so natural. And uh, the choice of the subjects for Lartig, he was just photographing what he had around. He was photographing his family, his uh, friends uh, going on his bicycle, or uh, his brother going with a little cart down a hill, or these kind of things. And um, he photographed the life uh, in Paris and so on. He photographed what he had around himself. And he photographed everything with uh, a lot of humor and a lot of joy. And this is uh, something that really is very, very rare to see right now in exhibit and photographs. And uh, the first thing I was thinking is why we are losing the joy of life why we are letting uh, um, what is uh, around us uh, ruin our ability to enjoy life uh, and uh, with our cameras uh, portray the joy of life and uh, if you think yes but now is a very bad situation it is but uh, 
he had the first world war the second world war and so on so he was not in a good situation also in real artig it's just something that in the last years was pushed on everybody is the 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 fact that the life uh, is something bad, it's not something joyous, it's not something fantastic. Uh, we were pushed the idea that the human being is something that is dangerous for the world, is uh, the bad things that can happen to the world. If you look at images by Latig, you see that uh, the humankind, the human being, is the most fantastic things that is in the world. Life uh, is fantastic. So. It's uh, something that is very different now, and we are losing it, and we are losing it also in photography. It's impressive how much uh, photography changed in that sense. It's very difficult to find uh, images that express joy. You see a lot of images now that express uh, uh, something that is narcissism, First of all, because you see a lot of images uh, of uh, the Milky Way with the photographer, the silhouette of the photographer, all these kind of things. And uh, we see a lot of images now that express uh, uh, kind of a beauty that is distant from what the man is doing. So it detached uh, from uh, the humankind. You see natural photography where nature is these beautiful things, the man sucks on all these kind of things. So you see a relation between the humankind and the world This is not uh, uh, a positive relation. But this is, was just an idea. The other things that uh, really, really uh, made me think is the quality of the images. Uh, he started photograph in the beginning of 1900, uh, so the technology was not that good, but still was fantastic. You look at the images and you think, uh, wow, this is beautiful, why cannot we do the same? And you see the images and there's an impact, uh, they are good, and they are not perfectly sharp. They are not uh, uh, perfect in every way, but they are great. And uh, something that impressed me, and this is also when I see other uh, exhibits uh, that are uh, with images made in the film era, or I simply look at, uh, my, at my archive uh, of the film era, and uh, you see that the images are smooth. And when I mean smooth, there are uh, parts of the images that are perfectly sharp, nice, but all the transition are smooth and are soft. With digital, we are losing all this. And not because just uh, the limit of the digital, there are some, but uh, because we use the digital uh, trying to uh, find that, uh, that perfection, that pixel peep imperfection. And I give you an example. is uh, If I look at the hill in front of my window, and it's something that uh, if you look at the, my lens and camera tests, uh, you see a lot of pictures there. Uh, I can see that there are trees on the hill, but uh, I don't see every single branch of the tree because that's not the resolution of the human eye. I see the tree, I can see the shape, I can see uh, the different kind of trees and recognize them, but uh, it's just uh, something that is general. I cannot discern every single uh, part of the tree, I cannot discern every single leaf. But when I use digital camera, I test the digital camera, I take the picture out of the window. The first thing that I do is to go 100% and see if I have that sharpness. And the sharpness for me is, oh, I want to see the, every single leaves or something on the tree. And uh, you think, why? There's not uh, uh, what the human eye sees. So, we are losing that natural feeling that we have with the images. And by the way, there's another problem that every software conversion from RAW to, to a rasterized image mostly use, uh, insert uh, some sort of sharpness. And so you see that uh, there's an artificial sharpness. And you see that uh, uh, the, the difference between the area and focus and the area out of focus is something that is, uh, there's not a very smooth transition, there's something that there's, there's a step. It's in focus, it's out of focus. Uh, 
you look at images, there's, there was one beautiful, uh, there was the profile of a woman, and I was looking at it, and uh, the focus was exactly on one eyelash, and uh, exactly there. And the image was fantastic, give the idea of perfect sharpness and focus and so on, but the focus was there. There was a really, really soft transition from one to other, and in front, on one side, on the other of the eyelash, was uh, smoothly transitioning to an out of focus area. And that is something that uh, if you take the image and insert uh, some sharpness, as we do right now always, yes, you will see the sharpness in all the eyelashes. But uh, it's not the same because it becomes artificial. You don't see that uh, softness. And by the way, our life is something that is uh, smooth and soft. Uh, I don't mean that we don't have our lives. I mean in the fact that uh, we transition from uh, one situation to another. There's uh, usually never something that is so square and sharp. Uh, the square is something that is artificial. If you see an angle, it's something artificial. And uh, our life is moot, is round, and also the transition. If you look at the, I look at the camera right now, and I focus the camera, and I turn around and I focus another area, I see the transition that is not uh, puff, immediate. It's something that is a soft tra transition, and all the things around become soft. I see the focus there, the focus there, but the rest is just an impression that is not perfect. But with digital, we are trying to create something that is not real, that perfection that is not real. And uh, we arrive, we look at the image made in the beginning of 1900, and wow, I stayed there to look at them and thinking, this is natural, this is fantastic. We arrive at the point that uh, uh, we, are, we were so educated that right now, uh, a f totally fake image created by uh, an artificial intelligence software can win a contest. We arrive at the point, and we arrive at the point because we as photographers started to detach from the real, detach from the reality and create uh, fake things. Uh, we start to uh, create uh, images that were uh, overcorrected, oversaturated, oversharpened, and so on. And that permits to a software to create images that are kind of equivalent to the images of a photographer. And uh, if you look at something as the images by Lartig, you think this cannot be created by an artificial intelligence. And cannot be created because what uh, an artificial intelligence will always lack is the joy of life. And uh, the joy of life is something that is absolutely human. So these were just my consideration. Uh, as usually, probably the video is too long, but uh, I don't care. You can just uh, stop to watch when you want. So uh, let me know what you think. And uh, seriously, if you see exhibits around from a photographer uh, from uh, the past, uh, especially photographer from the film uh, generation and so on, go to watch the exhibit, go to watch the prints, go to watch uh, the real prints and start to think uh, at the difference between now and then. Thank you very much for watching the video. Again, if you want to support the channel, put a like, subscribe, share with your friends, check out the books, Photography Life Manual, Lasting Photographs and Novel, and Fine Art in Jet Printing. Thank you for watching, see you next time.